Both our chair and Phil Malcolm are absent tonight, and so I'm going to designate both Mike okay. Wood and Dan Brand, well, all of us to serve as regular members of the panel tonight for all the matters that we have. We have, um, on the agenda, we don't have the minutes listed, but we have three sets of minutes to review. Minutes from May 21st, the last regular meeting, the 23rd, which was a site visit, and then the um, minutes of June 10th, which was our last meeting, uh, special meeting dealing with them. Let's take up the minutes of May 21. Okay, I have some comments. Yep. Um, a bunch of bullets in the middle of the first page. Uh, about the eighth or ninth one down, it starts the property is located in the Axel <laughs> Conservation District. And the board considered granting a 200 foot building envelope. It should be all zoned. And that's. Just grab a copy of it for you. Okay. You can use mine. Okay. Uh, except there's a whole bunch of others. So you can't use mine. Okay. I mean, you can have mine after okay. I read them off. Take okay. mine. Okay. So, so page one, uh, the word envelope should be replaced by the word zone because that's what it's called in the ordinance. Okay. And I added then behind it, um, in accordance with section three twenty seven four. Next page. Um, under application 2015 ZB12 plus logic. Um, I, I don't know whether we should correct the minutes or not, but I, what, I, what I felt was lacking is there's a discussion about uh, the, the first, the second sentence. The footprint of the combined structures will exceed the maximum building area. Combined structure see the maximum building area, that I assume that's a footprint, not uh, lot covered. I think that would be the exact same direction. Okay. I'm not sure whether it's maximum building area or footprint or what it's supposed to be, but, but it, I think if it is footprint, it should be corrected to footprint. And I didn't have the material in front of me to dig it out. I think it So, so that was part one, and the other part that gave me a, a bit of a headache is uh, probably we can't do anything about it. Is I thought on that application we had done the calculation to identify how much was left for him, and, and it doesn't show up anywhere in the uh, findings or the deliberation. So we don't have a clear record in the minutes that say. He used up 750 square feet of the 1,000, oh, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like in the bullets below, it says uh, the new structures will increase lot coverage by 42 square feet. The project proposes an increase in building footprint of 44 square feet. The project decreases building setback by 597 square feet, but there's no bookkeeping that says what the net result of those are. And it would be nice if we could get them in there, but I don't know if we can do it tonight. And so I would have to if you back could, Maybe we could just defer a correction on that until next meeting. Just so it gets into the Or you can just ask, I can just put the correction. Okay. Just in, in the last couple of months, the, the findings have been uh, just kind of Uh, uh, you know, pre no, you stuff should, and no, you should, no, no, no. You, you should, should remind right. us during the meeting. You should say, hey, have you screwed up? Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. I hate to do that, but you know, like the findings of 1040 and the abutters have commented and, and yeah. that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, that's often yeah. we're not hearing that, and so um, I would love it if we would. Yeah. Figure out a signal that says, uh oh. Yeah. Something like <laughs> Just this. Just say yeah. something to the okay. chairman, and maybe he'll apologize. Yeah. Um, there's another one, and that's the third page on the on the Jeff Little, uh, Gene McIntyre application. First paragraph. It's a question. 
The last sentence, the proposed location of the solar array is entirely within the Agricultural Soils <coughs> Conservation District. The proposed location of the solar array is entirely within the Ag Soils Conservation District. <coughs> I don't recall, I recall that that was still a question. I don't recall that that was definitive because there's a there's some sort of a map that says oh yeah the, a lot of the property or whole property for that area is ag soils, but one of the conclusions we drew when we did the site visit was to ask the applicant to have a soil scientist have a look at it to be actually determine whether that place was ag soils because if it isn't then there was no reason to come to the board so. Proposed location of the solar array is probably within the agricultural soils conservation district. What, what did or you submit? Maybe. What did you submit to us? I submit by, based on the USDA so maps, maps, the maps that, that we have. That's that we have. That okay, the and then did just it, put that in based on USDA. Based on the maps, the town maps, yes. That's what we got. And then about oh, two paragraphs below that starts with Daryl Hotchkiss. Yep. One, two, three, four, fifth line. Uh, one, two, three, four, fifth word from the right on the fifth line in that paragraph. The word if. I think that should be removed. So that it should read, if the, if the Vidal's objected to the placement, there might be any acceptable screening culture. Any other revisions? So what's your pleasure to how to deal with the missing facts? Do you want to uh, approve them with the understanding that the uh, zoning administrator will fill in the yeah. calculations? Square the calculations. Square All right, can I have a motion to approve I'll them? I'll yes, Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes of May 23rd, which is the site visit is it for the McIntyre uh, property? I have one question about it. Um, <coughs> second paragraph under continuation of application. One, two, three, fourth line down. The first word in the line is clearly. Um, but the sentence begins, the back and underside of the array and its mounting hardware would be clearly visible from the neighboring Vidal residence. We never went over to the Vidal residence to see what might be clearly visible. Well, that was their assertion, and that was his assertion. That was their assertion, but that's not, yeah. Well, then we take out clearly. The rest of the statement is accurate. Uh, would be visible, yes. Mike? Is that yes. something? Yes. Is that something? Yeah. Yes. I mean, in fact, if I can see over to their house, they can see over through. Right. Uh, not in, not, not in the same way, not in the same perspective, right, but right. it would be visible. And, and we, I, I just, just for the record, I think we blew it there. We should have gone over yeah, and have a look. We should, but that's okay. We should have. Yeah. The, there is one question I have is should that then say something to the effect that there is a, there is a claim made that the array is visible from the dolls? They just the fact. They stated, okay. I, they didn't stated say okay. I wouldn't use yeah. the word claim. Okay, yeah, I, 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 I didn't hear that. I heard it, but I did I mm -hmm. dumped it. So, that's all I had on that one. Well, could you just tell you where that is? I'm, I'm okay, um, on the first page, yep. second paragraph, one, two, three, fourth line down, May 23rd. First word is clearly. I would strike that. Okay. Any other corrections? Motion to approve is amended. Can someone? So moved. Second. All second. All, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes of June 10th, which are extensive. Yeah, I had some problems when I lost them. When I lost the minutes. They weren't, uh, there weren't a lot of problems.
just follow what we wrote at the meeting. of surrounding properties are not diminished by me. Yep. Then, then the next one is D, literal enforcement of provisions uh, of should be committed. Yeah, I just thought that. <laughs> Any okay. other corrections? Do I have a minute to prove? No, I think not. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll take care of all this. Okay, we have three items on the agenda tonight. We have a continuation of the Pinto project. Um, and we have a continuation of the, of the little application and then one for Vicki Smith. And we will take those in order. Um, and on the continuation of the Pinnacle project, we left off having dealt with the variances <laughs> on A, B, and C, and we asked two members of the board to work up drafts to present tonight on the remaining variance issues. So, I'm assuming that you've made some, they've done something or you've made copies? Absolutely. Uh, this is the one from Walt. This is the one from Matt. Do you have them identified as which one? Uh, oh, I'm, I, have, I did not change anything in. No, I just meant they do have in the corner or around the cover sheet. I'm something. putting a W and an A yeah. on them. Right. Because that's what I would do. Right. No, I, I don't. <laughs> Mine is my name. Yep. Ah, OK. Well, that helps. But <laughs> I didn't think. Sorry. I, just, I don't make any changes whatsoever. Yeah. To, just no, I, I point of fact. I can that. Yeah. So which order should we take? I think, Walter, you had the one which was based on our numbering of number two. Yep. Variance from zoning ordinance 5115C, permit law coverage of 8,915 square feet, right. et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this. Did we go into deliberation? We have not done any deliberation. Um, let's see if there's any other commentary that's going to be anybody's offering before we go into the deliberation. I assume not. We haven't had any further exhibits or anything. No. Motion to go into deliberation. Second? Second. All in favor? All right. All right. We are now in deliberation. So why don't you tell us what you've done? Well, let's take some time. Let's you see. want to read it? Yeah. Yeah, let's, good let's take some time. Yeah. Well, let's take some time. Let's start with uh, what Walter has done with respect to the, what we have labeled previously variance number two uh, with his right. revised description. Any comments on the revised description? Can I make some corrections? Sure. Okay. First paragraph. You read my first page now? First page, um, well, page two is the yep. way it's listed. Okay. Page two, first paragraph, under the, the long list of findings that are enumerated. Mm -hmm. Toward the end of the next line, it says, along, request along oh. as, yeah. take, I, I take along that. out. Yeah. That's just something that. Where, where are you? Right below number 31. First, first, first paragraph. paragraph. So line right, four. Right there. Oh, okay. The word alone doesn't belong there. And then on page four, under substantial justice, C. Yeah. Okay. The value to the public. Uh, it should read the value to the public in denying the variance far outweighs in perceived justice. And further down in that same paragraph, one, two, three, four, five, six. Line seven, third word is and, the property and. And, oh, yeah, and should be removed. Yeah. That's it. I had one more. Go ahead. Correct. That would be E, the yeah. second sentence. I would reorder the things. It doesn't, I think it makes it easier to read. The property is similar to uh, to other properties along the Route 10 corridor in the 
rural district in topography, size, soils, wetlands. Sure. It's just change that change in order. Yeah, get that change in order. It doesn't. And I think it makes it clearer. Let's go through. Any comments with respect to the uh, description of the findings of facts on page two, beyond what's already been identified? Uh, Relating to lot coverage or findings one, two, three, six, seven, the whole list? One, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. say, considering these findings and those determined on June 10th, the board makes the following conclusions regarding the requested variance, and then Less. then let them go down through. Just, uh, just eliminate the rest of that? Sentence. Yes. So the board makes? The board makes the following conclusions regarding the requested variance. somewhere, I'm going to suggest one other thing that we ought to say. Um, but let me just give you the concept at the moment. And, and that would be that while variances two and three are being considered and determined separately, they are derivative in large part from variances one, A, B, and C, which have been denied for the reasons set forth previously. Isn't that something that you feel should be inserted I, in each I, one? I think things. so. I think they are derivative. But let's, let's I would agree. leave that for the moment. Yeah. So that could be a thing, but that should be a thing. I think so. I think yeah. so. I agree. So consistent with what we did the other night uh, on our fair end, this is the findings that Walter has written up on behalf of the board. And I'm going to read them. There are five elements to the variances which must uh, be met in order for a board of adjustment uh, to make a finding, favorable finding. A, the variance will not be contrary to the public interest finding. The proposed scale and density of the project on the proposed site is inconsistent with the purposes and objectives of the rural district and would significantly alter the essential character of this locality in the rural district. The lot coverage shown in the plans and requested by the applicant is, is nearly twice to four times that permitted for a single lot in the rural district, depending on whether or not the driveways shown in the plans are to be classified as public roads. Yep. You're reading this out in deliberation to us. I'm reading it out so that everybody can hear what we do. Okay, and everybody may or may not be aware of what the requested variance was, the lot cover. So you might want to read that. Thank you. First. <laughs> Thank you. The, this variance is what we've been previously identified as variance request number two, separate from other issues we've ruled on on June 10th. The applicant requests an area variance from the zoning ordinance section 5.15C to permit lot coverage of 58,913 square feet, in parentheses 105,151 square feet with driveways on the 198 acre lot where the, where, parentheses, the applicant contends that, parentheses, a total of 130,000 square feet of lot coverage 
would be permitted in a five lot subdivision of uh, or 156,000 square feet in a six lot size average development. So it'd be quite technical for all. Yes. No, I like that. Picking up on the second paragraph, under A, the property is comprised of a mixture of forested steep slopes to the east and open lands covered by wetlands and agricultural soils. Um, where are you? I'm under a. second paragraph under A. A second paragraph is B. Okay. Because of the mix of agricultural soils within and the nearby the wetlands conservation districts, the practical use of the agricultural soils area is limited to the contiguous area where the buildings and drives are proposed, the area where the lot coverage relief is requested. And as a result of the arrangement of the buildings and closing an open area between them, any use of the remaining agricultural soils is severely constrained. Basically, the three to four acres of contiguous agricultural soils would be eliminated permanently altering the essential character of the property. Section 3.27.4 of the zoning ordinance specifically addressed the importance of preserving agricultural soils. The primary objective of the Agricultural Soils Conservation District is to preserve and protect the town's agricultural soils by permitting only those uses which can be accommodated without destroying the usefulness of such soils for agricultural production. End of quote. The proposal for such extensive lot coverage in the limited area of agricultural soils on the property clearly violates what is considered to be the public interest as expressed in the description and objectives of the agricultural soils district. The zoning ordinance as currently enacted represents the public interest in what is permitted or not and under what circumstances or restrictions. Granting the variance will be contrary to the public interest because it would violate basic zoning objectives. For the foregoing reasons, the variance requesting relief from the lot coverage limitation in section 5.15c is found to be contrary to the public interest. The other day, uh, the way we proceeded was to vote on each of these separate findings as we went. Are there are any comments or changes to this finding? No. May I hear a motion? I move that we Make the finding. Make the finding and uh, deny that this uh, uh, deny that it uh, and state that it will be contrary to the public interest. That's I think where I should stay. Any a second? Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion that is worded? Aye. 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 Five to zero. Support. Finding B, the spirit of the ordinance is observed by me. The proposed development and requested lot coverage covers a substantial portion of agricultural soils in the wetlands conservation district. These districts, quote, are established in order to protect Lyme's natural heritage and agricultural soils and to ensure that the land is developed only according to its natural cap capability, close quote, section 3.27. The proposed development is located in the rural district, among whose objectives is Quote, to protect the existing pattern of rural land uses in town, close quote. Further, quote, less intensive land uses are permitted in the rural district to ensure that uses complement each other and are consistent with the existing character of the district, close quote. The limitation on lot coverage set forth in section 515C is consistent with these definitions and objectives. The requested relief from the lot coverage criterion set in 515C is clearly in contrast with these objectives. As noted above, the requested coverage as shown in the plans would eliminate the agricultural use of the only viable contiguous area of agricultural soils on the lot in violation of the objectives of section 3.27. Furthermore, the Conservation Commission and others have noted that the project would have significant impact upon wetlands and other rural features. The intent of the limitation on lot coverage is to assure that properties are not developed for uses beyond those that are specifically permitted in the districts defined in the zoning ordinance and do not significantly impact those features that the conservation districts are designed to protect. For the foregoing reasons, granting the variance requesting relief from the lot coverage limitation in section 515C is found to be contrary to the spirit and intent of the ordinance. I have a motion with respect to that. Fine. Any any comments or changes? Yes. Very minor. Keller lines down from the beginning. 
kids should not have a, a doctor. That's in the ordinance. <laughs> oh, Walter! <laughs> I just cut and paste. <laughs> I, I didn't have to think on that one. So, nonetheless, we can be correct. We can be correct. Okay. We could write the word sick after it. <laughs> doesn't that do it? That would do it, yes. Because you But I'd put a K audience. on that if you were going to do it. No. <laughs> yeah, let's put sick in there. Any other corrections? Any motion with respect to this finding? I move to accept the finding and to deny the variance. That's good. I, I, yeah. I had a motion. I, I move to accept the finding that the um, Spirit the, variance, the, the variance requesting relief is contrary to the spirit and intent of the ordinance and therefore the variance should be denied. I second. Any further discussion? In favor of the motion as ordered? Aye. Aye. Five to zero is the vote. The third finding, substantial justice is done. Um, I hope I got all that changed correctly. The value to the public in denying the variance far outweighs any perceived justice to the applicant. The requested relief from law coverage standards would seriously impact the agricultural soils and wetlands on the property damaging areas that are specifically set aside in the ordinance for preservation and protection. The damage would be irreparable, replacing sensitive areas with buildings and roads. But not by denying the variance, the existing features on this property are preserved and remain consistent with the objectives of the zoning ordinance and other properties in the rural district. The property may still be developed within the existing constraints of the ordinance, satisfying the object objectives of the rural district and the conservation districts on the property thus resulting in a significant gain to the general public. For the foregoing reasons, granting the variance requesting relief from the lot coverage limitation in section 515C does not result in substantial justice to the applicant. Any other changes? There was a you, change you didn't read, sir, yeah, yeah, uh, that we picked up earlier. The value you to the public in denying the requested variance. You requested denying variance. the requested, requested variance. variance. Okay. Far outweigh. Thank outweigh. you. That was that. Thank you. Any other changes? A motion for approving this finding? I'll vote. Second. And then the finding is that the granting the variance would not result in substantial justice. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 D, the simplest of all, the values of surrounding properties are not diminished. There is insufficient definitive testimony to support a determination that granting the variance will diminish surrounding property values. Any changes? I'll move that. Yeah, I yeah. Okay. And this is not a this is not a finding of one way or another. So yes. we're saying insufficient evidence. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 I disagree. You disagree. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it is a finding that there is insufficient evidence. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So we could not demonstrate whether there's yeah. so increase but, or decrease. Yeah, I didn't say that. Or property okay. values. Thank you. And I think the one that we did the week before has me as moving something that I don't think is what I meant. You were supposed to say that in terms of the minutes. I know, and I forgot. Oh, okay. So you would like it to be the same as this, which was which yeah, was state more or less. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just just the fact that the the motion that I intended to to give at that time was that there was insufficient evidence and therefore the board could not find either way. that there yeah. was either an increase or decrease in property value. Okay. We don't say that uh, from the last week. I know. Yeah. That's what he's trying to change. Yeah. Somebody else worded the finding and then somehow I got roped into moving it and I didn't at the time I moved it, I didn't even understand, quite understand the wording properly, and I wanted to change it, but 
it's an easy chance way to reach down, you know, before last week. The board concludes that there is insufficient evidence. Uh, we can say the board finds that there is insufficient evidence. That's fine too. It was the wording of the actual motion though that showed up in the minutes. Right, right, right. That reads inconsistent that that statement. And I, I didn't catch it when I was reading through this stuff. Right? I think it should be corrected. It should be consistent, which is what you're bringing up, because it's based on the past. Okay. The easy one. Yeah. So the minutes do say the board voted unanimously on a motion by Walter, seconded by Ralph, to approve the finding that there is insufficient evidence. That's correct. To conclude that the value of surrounding properties will not be diminished by granting grants. Well, then why was I so twisted around about it? It's okay. Oh, good. Good enough. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. All right. Do we want to use? Do we want to use? Do you want to repeat that exact same motion? There's consistency in doing that because it's what we said on our first hearing. Okay. Here. I don't think we can. All right. All right. Number E. Last one. Last one. Little enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship finding. There is no unnecessary hardship to the applicant. The property is similar to other properties along the Route 10 corridor in the rural district in topography, size, soils, wetlands, slopes, forested lands, and proximity to Route 10. Sills Several such properties are also close to water bodies, including close pond. The ordinance specifically addresses properties of this type and limitations on the dimensional requirements that must be adhered to. Such provisions are intended specifically to recognize and preserve those features that characterize the rural district. The applicant has shown that the reasonable use of the property can be made in accordance with the provisions of the ordinance through a subdivision process that might result in five lots of single family residences without a need for the excessive lot coverage relief being sought. For the foregoing reason, relief from the lot coverage limitation in section 515C does not result in unnecessary hardship to the applicant and the applicant should, the variant should be denied. Any other changes? Do a motion to go out of deliberations? I so move. Second? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I just have a little concern with this finding in Allen's um, in respect to uh, the variance criteria in RSA 674.33. The RSA says there, there are two sets of criteria. If one fails, then you have to evaluate on the second set. And to me, it's not clear that both sets of criteria are being uh, shown in the, the decision. And so it's just my concern that both those sets of criteria will need to the A and the B paragraphs. Right. Okay. Um, and all, so of the, I all of the findings are just. I, I assume that what you were looking for then is something in, in A that we talked about that there is a fair uh, uh, substantial no relationship existing yes. between the provisions of the ordinance yeah. and the, these limitations. And that the proposed use is a reasonable one. That those are the two criteria for A. I mean, do you want to read the, I have the uh, let's, part okay. right here. I think what he's suggesting is something similar to what we did. Okay. Anyway, that's all I have. Is the proposed use of the reasonable one? Uh, no, no, no. The, the, you, make, you have to make the, uh, there are two findings in A, and both have to be affirmatively made. If you make a finding that there's a fair and substantial relationship between the ordinance and the limitations, then that takes care of A. And then in B, you have to find that there, in order to be a hardship, there have to be some special circumstances peculiar to this unit and not true for others. Mm -hmm. And so what I think David is suggesting is he wants a finding that 
uh, there is, in fact, a fair and substantial relationship between the provisions of the ordinance and the limitation in uh, Section 556. I think that's what you said. Um, or, or do you have other language? I don't have any other language. Um, I'm just, I guess my concern is that um, the way that the RSA is written, you, you look at A, if A fails, then you have to consider B. And, and what if A doesn't fail? Then that you, you can, would be. You can still consider B. There's nothing that prevents that. In other words, can you do it both ways? Can you do both? Yeah. Can you address both subjects? I think we talked about this last meeting. I thought Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It would be useful to have some other language. You brought it up, actually. Yeah, I mean, I, I think something similar to what we did last time works. Oh, that's fine if we can, if we can suggest the right word. I'm just concerned that if down the road, someone's looking at this, they're looking, seeing uh, that only one section, one set of criteria was established. Can you read it out loud? I'm reading from the uh, variance worksheet where it yeah. tracks the language of the statute. Um, and so what the first finding that you need to make, uh, if you're talking about unnecessary hardship, is whether or not there's a fair and substantial relationship between the general public purchase purpose of the ordinance provision in question and the application to this property. And like we said in the prior time, there is a fair and substantial relationship between the purposes according to what you've said of the uh, ordinance provision 515C and its application to this project. Correct. Which would then satisfy condition A. Okay, and what's condition B? Condition B is if you, if you hadn't satisfied A, then an unnecessary hardship would be deemed to exist if and only if, according to special, owing to special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area. Right. Property cannot be reasonably used. Special and unique. Special and unique. Right. But we, have we not addressed that? I yeah. thought. We did in the earlier one. We didn't. I but thought what we David's did. raising here is a question of whether we. Well, let me ask another question. Yes. Yeah. So if you don't, if you don't satisfy A, can you find it? It is sufficient to satisfy B. Uh, not according to what. But that's your concern, right, David? No. No, my concern is that just that to be sure that if A is not sat or if that way, that both of those conditions are perceived. The you, you'd like to nail the coffin twice with making sure that she's a finding under A and a finding under B. Yes, I think that's the best way. I think that's, that's, that's what And that's what we did with that, like, in, in reverse. Yeah, we did B first yes. and A second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I don't have any problem with doing it. Uh, certainly, I think it's the facts support both conditions yeah. having been. Yeah, we stated, but we stated. But, but I just didn't get the words in properly. And if you got good suggestions on how to change them, I struggled with it. You know, I didn't mention it. <laughs> and. Let me suggest something. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you can use the same sentence. I do. Uh, uh, so, yeah, let, me, let, let me suggest something. Maybe we should. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we have to go to the other side. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah, we'll start them. All in favor? Aye. Go Aye. back into the direction. Yeah. Okay, so, so in the June 10 yeah. minutes, um, the first sentence of that particular finding. Criteria is the board finds a lot is neither unique nor distinguishable from other similar properties in the world district. And that's B. That's B. B. Yeah, but yeah. that's exactly what it is. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. so 
you're saying add that. I propose to make that the first sentence okay. of my funding. Okay. To remove there's no unnecessary hardship from that. Yeah. yeah. We can okay. say that then. Yeah. Okay. And insert sentence one. The board finds the third one. That the lot is neither unique nor distinguishable from other similar properties in the rural district. Right. Okay. Um, and the next sentence is a copy or, or is the same set of words or the same set of information as my second sentence, although slightly different word. Okay? Similar mm -hmm. to topography, so it's yep. but let's look for a little bit of Several such properties also enclosed in water bodies, which I wanted to include. Yep. Including those properties. The ordinance specifically addresses the ordinance has delineated such properties. The ordinance specifically addresses properties of this type as part and limitations of dimensions that must be adhered to. And that's where I deviated from the wording of earlier. Yeah, I mean, all I would really suggest is that we think about the fifth sentence, in the earlier one. Oh, since, earlier. since the owner may pursue other, albeit less intrusive, residential development on the current terms of the ordinance, a fair and substantial relations does exist between the general purposes, public purposes of the ordinance and their application. Okay. And the particular wording that I used to express that idea, but didn't follow through with the conclusion of the sentences, <laughs> has shown reasonable use of the property can be made yep. in accordance with the provisions of the ordinance. So the subdivision process might result in lots of five, six residents, etc., etc. And what we could add after that sentence is um, the, the a, fair, a fair, less fair and substantial yep. relationship exists between the, the general and the applicants. So, so Adair, and then the relief being sought. And before, for the foregoing reasons, insert thus, did you say? Yeah, thus yeah. a fair, thus a fair and substantial relationship does exist between the general public purposes of the ordinance and their application to this law. And that completes the thought. I think that addresses, I hope that addresses what yeah. somebody, was, somebody was raising. Any other questions or questions? Um, an amendment, uh, not an amendment, a motion to approve this finding as amended? I move. Go ahead, so move. I'll move. Yeah, I'll move it. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I, before we go on to Alan's, I think that, that what we will probably do is simply follow on from the prior findings of June 10th with these as, a, as an eventual notice of decision, and eventually these additional findings. That's the format we will use. Yeah. Just keep They're going all to one, yep. one document. That's, that's the thought. So if, we, if you have some questions about that, we'll change that later. All right, let's go to Alan's um, draft. And, uh, did you change the language on the variance thing, number three language, you didn't, did you? No. Okay, so the- I don't believe I did. So the very first half of the page- Is a cut and paste. Is a yeah. cut and paste, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so the next part are your factual findings. Right. Um, starting, starting at in number three above. The paragraph above facts pertinent to this request says it's anticipated that all residents will take their meals in the common house. That's not true. Uh, this is yeah. an idea of maybe one, you know, dinner or but not mandatory. They have their own kitchen. In their some places. Kitchen. Okay. All right. Well, then let's you can change just, that. Just strike. All right. I'm not going to read the uh, facts, no, I'm going to go back. 
But are there any questions or changes on the facts that you stated? This, this variance, um, by the way, for the purpose of anybody who may be just listening out there, gentlemen, is the uh, is a footprint limitation in our zoning ordinance of 11,000 square feet. Um, and it is our interpretation under the zoning rules that when you have connections between buildings, as uh, has been proposed in this case, a total connection of three units, uh, they exceed that by substantial amounts. Is the maximum building permit 7,000, and I think you're going to say that the uh, between the three buildings is going to be a yep. total of 13,517. Yep. 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 And I was using the most recent submission of facts uh, off of their okay. control something. Right. That Bobby submitted. That Bobby submitted. Yes. Changes to the facts of factual findings which will be set forth in the total point. I'm, um, I'm biased on that, so I didn't see any. <laughs> um, can't remember that. Um, because I can't remember where I saw it, but someplace in, in your draft here, yep. you mentioned that waivers for covered places to uh, facilitate uh, yes. disabilities right. are permitted. Uh, I can't remember where I saw it. Yeah, I it's, it's, it's three. Number, number, number three. three. Number three. Three. Over the back, so the first, yeah. the first page. Connecting public bridges for access between structures are considered to be important. Mm -hmm. So we understand 10 seconds of the limit. That limit. It's a waiver to that limit to accommodate disabilities. Right. And that's a true statement, but that. That provision of the ordinance goes a little bit deeper than that. Okay. I think it says that when the specific disability, with the person who specifically has a disability, no longer has the use of that. That's correct. So it's designed to be to address a single person with a unique situation. It is. And yeah, it says that in, in granting any waiver to this paragraph, the ZBA, they provide in a finding included in the waiver that the waiver shall survive only so long as the particular person has a continuing use of the premises. So it's an individual use. It's an individual use. Right. And the implication of, and that's why I, uh, I don't know that I can find it with me, but the in the Ryan case down on the river road, not put a time limit on that or an expiration date of that in that particular instance where that lot was uh, by connecting the garage with the house exceeding the lot footprint. It's a very small lot, I'll grant you, but the point was that there wasn't any time limit for us or statement for her residency. For basically. her residence at that point. Right? So, okay. That okay. was That's where I not important. Yeah, that was where I started from. It was that particular case. Yeah, and it says the board of adjustment may provide it in a fine. Yeah, sure. It Which was the word that jumped out at me. Yeah. Discretion. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But, but I guess I have to believe that, for, you know, it's in terms of some of these uh, criteria that. The argument for a waiver is much stronger here than in the other yeah. instances. That and so I guess the question is, do we really need to deny, you know, all the requests for 
waivers for variances? No, we don't have to. We don't. We, have, we to. have to vote on this motion. I mean, this. However, whether you know, I think that the the bottom issue is that the connection increases the footprint of one structure sure. because it's connected because we've got these connecting bridges, although they don't have footprints. But they do exist and they connect them so that it becomes one structure by our interpretation. But you could make the argument that well, I think that's not necessary hardship for that was that was I think where I first started from with that one, but uh, I then came to the uh, point of view that uh, this because uh, that, that, that my first draft said something to that effect, but then the uh, lawyer came back and <laughs> cut it all to shreds. <laughs> and uh, admittedly, I had made a mistake because uh, I had thought that the removal of the bridges by granting the waiver, uh, in my mind, negated the, the, the connections, but it doesn't. They are still connected, whether, they, whether the bridges are an issue or not. Uh, in that the, the three had become one, and we've always considered those as a, a connection between each of the structures that they're attached to. Wait, wait a minute. You're saying the three buildings that are identified as the common and the, the other two, two the crest, they're yeah. connected even without the bridges? They're connected even though the bridges themselves have no footprints. Okay, but the bridges exist. If the, the bridges, bridges exist. If the bridges don't exist. If they don't exist, then they're not connected. Okay. Right. Right. But because of the, what they uh, asked us, requested from us, was a variance to that footprint. Okay. Then they are intending to connect them. Yep. Okay. It, it, it seems to me, then, in response to your question, that uh, this this gets to the issue of the derivative nature of these variances. That yeah. Had we approved the other variances, then a waiver might well have been appropriate for the disability kind of reasons. But because it's, it's almost moved because we haven't approved those variances, and without those variances, this one. It's true, yeah, but we, are we not looking, although we refer to simpler findings, are we not judging these individually? And if that's the case, then dance is a valid point. Except that there's been no proof that anybody has a disability. Uh, absolutely. And can you put out a, family, a finding that puts it on the burden of the zoning administrator and the town that this shall only be legal if and when there is a disabled person that needs to use it? Let, well, one way to, we've dealt with this issue of connecting buildings yeah. to, to satisfy somebody with a disability. Right. There's, there's the case he mentioned. There have been other cases yeah. in the past where you could argue that, okay, guy has a sore leg for six weeks and uh, he wants to put in and connect these two buildings. So the variance is only for six weeks. Yeah, or <laughs> or it's it, who yeah. enforces it, and it's, the yeah. other half of it is if you look at it the other way. I think suppose if, suppose they go through the the process and are allowed to build five six buildings, and the variance is to the variance the, the ability to increase the footprint of these the one three building cluster is denied because we vote to deny it for good reason. So now they build the four or five buildings and they have no connections. And it turns out that two or three or four or five or six of the residents who buy the properties come in with disabilities. Well, they come back to the board and say, we want to connect them. Can we yeah. do that? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. that, the whole table that's turns true. because they've got, yes. I, I think that's really an argument yeah. that has to yeah. be looked at. Yeah. yeah. So how does this, how does this get resolved now? Is that well, the what's their excuse, what's the reasoning? What's their reasoning for having requesting a variance? Programmatically, I think is the it's, main reason. It's because they want people to be able to stay Easily out of the rain access. when they go from one building to another. Right, right. right. Yeah. And, and there was testimony at one point. I forget which, which uh, session, but that they, they handicapped 
will well, be using the bridge. Well, certainly. I mean, it's going to be open. They're not going to discriminate. It's likely they'll be handicapped. Yeah, there people there are age in place. Yeah, but, well, there's nothing about aging in place. Right. They abandoned that. Right. So I think they have to demonstrate that. Okay, so another, 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 another way to yeah. look at it. Yeah. Three years from now, the project, well, the project is granted. They build everything. Three yeah. years from now, it fails for financial reasons or something else. Somebody else buys it as a mixed cluster of condos that is open to any public ownership and purchase. Right. No handicapped people show up. Yeah. Um, what What's the basis for us having granted a variance, which is you know, a special process? Yeah. What's the reasoning behind it? And I don't see it, not at this point in time. No, so, I just, so I, I was just picking up what Dan said. That was yeah, I, I don't good disagree. Question. Yeah, I'm, I'm, good I'm, question. I'm convinced. Okay. Okay. Well, right. I'm not convinced until I argue, <laughs> my, until I argue myself silly. I, I, I look at it all six ways. Yeah, and, and, and it's good to do. Well, and we should. Yeah. All right. Let's. Let's. Any other things on the factual thing? Let's go to the findings and the variance criteria. And, and what, I, what I think I see you have done is, is, is followed in the general tenor of, of the prior variances and adding yeah. specific references yeah. that are applicable to this particular yeah. limitation. Right. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have a reading and a voting on each of these. That is, I thought I had, but maybe I didn't. No, you did. Oh, you did? did? I'm sorry. I did. You okay. paraphrased. <laughs> All right. A, the variance would not be contrary to public interest finding. The board finds as follows. The proposed scale and density of the project on the proposed site is inconsistent with the purposes and objectives of the rural district and would significantly alter the essential character of this locality in the rural district. The proposed single structure footprint, well in excess of the 7,000 square foot limit set, forth, set in section 514B, was not permitted in the rural district. Since numerous other properties in the rural district share similar characteristics with this lot, other property owners could request comparable variance relief, and the cumulative effect of equivalent development would be totally inconsistent with the less intrusive uses intended in the rural district. The prior expression of the town's residents in rejecting a similar but less intrusive proposed zoning amendment is indicative of sentiment that such development is not in the public interest. The zoning ordinance as currently enacted represents the public interest in what is permitted or not and under what circumstances or restrictions. For the foregoing reasons, the variance identified in request three above is contrary to the public interest. Changes. A motion to approve that finding that the variance is contrary. Second? Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The spirit of the ordinance is observed finding. The board finds as follows. The objectives of the rural district include the protection of existing pattern of rural land uses and thus less intensive uses are permitted. The project as proposed, creating a single structure footprint nearly double that allowed in the rural district, would represent a substantially larger structure than anywhere else in town with the exception of the skiway and commercial districts. This would violate the objectives underlying the purpose of the rural district. For the foregoing reasons, the variance identified in request three above does not observe the spirit of the zoning ordinance. Any other changes? Motion to approve the finding. So moved. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Substantial justice is done by The board finds as follows. Opening up the rural district to such large structures as proposed in this project results in an injustice to the town and its residents that outweighs any benefit that would be received by the applicant. For the foregoing reasons, the variance identified in request three above is not required in order that substantial justice is done. Changes. Motion to approve the finding. Second. Second. Right. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The values of surrounding properties are not diminished by it. Let's see if we come up with a different version this time. The board concludes that there is insufficient evidence to reach a definitive conclusion as to this criteria. 
It is probable that there would be some impact on property values where the variance is to be granted. That is, some existing properties might see reduction in value, while others, particularly undeveloped land, might increase in value. That's exactly the same as our joke. Yeah, a cut and paste, I guess. <laughs> is any changes? Just a, a question. Yeah. Is, I mean, is that, I mean, it's a question. Is that relevant as a finding? I mean, it's a true statement, but the jury just say that it's insufficient evidence. I'm going to stop there. It's just a, it's a question. Because we didn't say that. We you, didn't say that in the. You like to stop at the first sentence? Yeah. It's, no, we said it. The we board. did say it before. So the way the RSA reads yeah. is that in order to grant a variance, the board must find right. that the right. value of Surrounding yes. properties is not diminished. Right. Yep. Or, or so. Yeah. We're so just saying. So in theory, if we can't find that as a fact, right. which we're saying here, right. we don't need to meet any of the other five criteria. It's just sort of weird. I understand. Okay. That's, and I any guess one right. of these, I think, could defeat the right. right. Yeah, yeah need all five. Okay. Absolutely right. So but I think it's that's fine. I think it's, it's, I think it's useful to be complete. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. in favor. Aye. 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 Last. Little enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in unnecessary, unnecessary hardship finding. The board finds as follows. The board finds that the lot is neither unique nor distinguishable from other similar properties in the rural district. Many properties along Route 10 in town have the characteristics of agricultural soil mixes, wetlands, and steep slopes, and low population densities. The ordinance has delineated such properties as part of the rural district to preserve and protect such features and to regulate development to minimize excessive growth and maintain features consistent with the rural setting. The magnitude of the proposed use is not reasonable, particularly in light of the site conditions that characterize this and similar properties. The proximity of the lot to the property and hospitality business of Lock Lime Lodge does not alter the developable status of the lot. Since the owner may pursue other, albeit less intrusive, residential development under the current terms of the ordinance, a fair and substantial relationship does exist between the general public purposes of the ordinance and their application to this law. For the foregoing reason, the literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance does not result in an unnecessary hardship, and the variances set forth in request three is not approved. Could that be variance or variance? Singular, it could be variance. Any other changes? Motion to approve the finding? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that deals with now. Just for a matter of interest, I think it's nitpicking, but should we move to deny the request for a variance from 5.14 and perhaps we should do the same for the variance requested in two, in total? I believe we did that. I think we did, so we will do that. Yes, we should. That's the first motion, and why don't you make a motion? I move that we deny the request for a variance labeled number two, which is a variance from ordinance section 515C, permit law coverage of whatever. You've got the numbers. I move that we deny that request for a variance. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we're simply dealing with the entire request as opposed to the separate findings? Yes. For the, for your provision, variance number three, you want to make a similar motion? Aye, so moved, yes. We deny that request for a variance. Okay. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think we ought to do two other things, and then I'm hopefully that maybe we can be done. Okay. Originally, I earlier mentioned that I, that while we are, I'd like to have a statement that while we, in fact, voted on, considered and voted on variances two and three separately, 
they are in fact derivative in large part from the variances 1A, B, and C, which have been denied for the reasons previously adopted. Mm -hmm. so you want that added to the bottom of the comment? Yeah. Uh, I do that. Or I do move that. Yeah, okay. Second. I'll second. I'll, yeah. Any further discussion? No. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think lastly, um, there have been a number of special exceptions requested to the as part of this application. Um, I'd like to ask how you want to proceed. My sense is that the various special exceptions requested were germane only if the variances had been approved. May, may I? Go ahead. I move that we table any requests for variances until such time as special exceptions. Special exceptions. Variance. Uh, yeah. Uh, I move that we table those requests for special exceptions until such time as they may be in fact necessary. Discussion. Does <coughs> that? I think that is a discussion. Does that give them a definitive uh, decision that therefore will be credit making react to, even though we have not responded to the full? applications request is a question. Or is it leaving pending? I know it's logical, but that isn't right. I, I, I don't know. It leaves it pending only if our decisions on the variances get overturned. To uh, my way of looking at it. Uh, Robert Esquire, what's your sense? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I move to um, table consideration of the special exceptions until we have a reading from the town attorney as to what the ramifications of tabling the special exception request until such time as various issues are dealt with. Shall I withdraw my motion? Why, why don't you, you second that one? I, I withdraw my motion, and whoever seconds it, and I'll second it. Okay. Um, what, I, what I would expect that would happen is that administrator would go back to the town council and say, here is, the board wants to know what we should do on this. The options are either to uh, put them on hold or to uh, deny them without prejudice to the back. And so um, this motion certainly would allow that. So this uh, has a sense to go ahead. Okay. I'd like to ask whether you can go to deliberation if he has an opinion on that. My only question is whether or not that keeps them from having a decision. Yes. We can we can ask that, yeah, but but, but the, the issue no, is, okay. is the Go variances, ahead. and I understand. And we have denied that. I, I don't think it precludes them in any way. So okay. In the past, we we tabled okay, uh, that's during deliberation because we didn't have enough information or clarity on specific items. Yep. I don't see how this is different. We okay. have. So can All we right. can we uh, any further discussion? Can we vote on the uh, no, motion to, to table? To okay. table. Yeah. Pending uh, request from council. Any Aye. further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 How about a motion to go out of deliberation? I shall move. Second. Do I approve? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any questions on that, David? No, you're, you're looking at asking council, is it okay to table those special exceptions until such time that they become pertinent? <laughs> begin? Or should you? Should we have denied them or done something else with them? Yeah. Or voted on them? Or do we need or to? Not do we I, need I think they move. I think yeah. they move because they're derivative from the but let's see what he says. Yeah. Do we have anything further deal needing to be done on the pinnacle project at this point? Not to my knowledge. What, what I think we would propose is that the findings that I mean, we wouldn't deny will be put together with the prior findings and we will issue a notice of decision that has all of those features in it. And then that can be made available. So pending pending council. Well, the, I think the pending council issue is whether or not we have to take some further action. But I think we oh, ought to, let, we ought to right. let them go forward. If oh, they want to that's appeal, what I meant. Yeah. That was my question. If they want to appeal, or okay. ask for So this doesn't hold that up. That was my only. That was okay. my question. Okay. Any other matters on that? Okay. If I can find an agenda somewhere.